Welcome to the show. Now today we're going to be talking about the top five werewolf movies of the 1960s. So this list, well, let's be honest. In the 1960s, horror films were discombobulated. They weren't the best products out there. So let's show you the list and we're going to talk about it after. Check it out. First on our list is a British-made classic, The Curse of the Werewolf. It's an adaptation of a 1933 indoor novel, but set in Madrid instead of Paris to save on building new sets after the BBFC objected to the script for the film set during the Spanish Inquisition. The plot has a lot of sexual assault, both actual and attempted, in it at the start, followed by the genesis of the werewolf, an indoor's take on folklore. It then picks up with Leon, the tragic werewolf protagonist played by Oliver Reed in his first starring role in film. The resulting movie was heavily censored, but the censored print was finally shown in the BBC in 1993. The film is supposedly a loose adaptation of the novel Werewolf of Paris, written by Guy Endor. The film forgoes the more popular 20th century myth that a person bitten by a werewolf will become one. Instead, it invokes the much older idea that a child born on Christmas Day will be the victim of the Lupine Curse. Now, in many European countries, it was believed that a child that was born on Christmas Day was actually competing with the assumed birth of Jesus Christ and that the curse was punishment for blasphemy. With the exception of the opening titles, Oliver Reed does not appear until roughly halfway through the film and his screen time as a werewolf is even less. In fact, he first appears at just over an hour into the 90-minute film. As with many other horror hammer films, this feature offers an abrupt ending. Now, our next flick is called Letro Cantopus, and this is an Italian film that was released in the USA as Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. Now, it took action into the bedroom, you know, literally, but kept up the horror side with savage murders and wolf sightings at a girl's school. Now, keeping with the medical horror themes, suspicion falls on a newly hired chemistry teacher who may or may not be the werewolf. Now, Lawrence described the werewolf transformation as being shot in reverse, starting with full makeup and shot in reverse with more elements of his transformations being removed. The whole process shot with dissolves takes over three hours. He also described shooting the film as a chaotic experience with the actors all predominantly speaking different languages, French, English, Italian, even German. From contemporary reviews, the Globe and Mail stated that the film was disfigured by bad dubbing and a silly attempt to establish a locale as the United States. It might have been a very respectable specimen of an old horror school otherwise. Now, this is actually a fairly entertaining movie for the time. Had it been made a couple of decades later, it might have been delivered on its exploitation title, such as 2006's Werewolf in a Woman's Prison, but some things are just better left to the imagination. The werewolves are a little more serious in the anthology film Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, starring Peter Cushing as Dr. Terror. The Dr. Terror reads tarot cards for five strangers whose stories unfold in five segments. Now there's a vampire story, a sentient intelligent plant story, a voodoo story, and in one which Christopher Lee appears as an art critic being pursued by a disembodied hand. Now the werewolf segment has all the usual elements. An architect returns to his ancestral home, much like Larry Talbot in The Wolfman, and finds a vengeful werewolf there. This has more in common with the Hounds of Baskervilles, but it sets a werewolf as a key horror monster that no self-respecting comedy horror anthology could be without. This is the movie debut of Roy Castle, who played Biff Bailey. Now, when Biff buys a pack of cigarettes, he immediately puts them in his pocket. Now, this is because Roy Castle was a lifelong non-smoker. Ironically, he died of lung cancer, probably from secondary smoke after a lifetime in jazz clubs. Later, when Biff is seen running in fear down the street, he passes a cinema with a poster of Peter Cushing on it, actually advertising Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Eight years later, two of the film stars, Christopher Lee and Kenny Lynch, would end up on the cover of Paul McCartney and Wings' hit album, Band on the Run, along with three members of Wings and four other well-known names. Our next movie is Dr. Terror's Gallery of Horrors, which was made in 1967. 
This was a low-budget color scope anthology film by David L. Hewitt from stories from Russ Jones. It has also been released as The Witch's Clock after the first story, and the only one to feature the star John Carradine, who hosts various segments. It also stars Lon Chaney Jr., Roger Gentry, and Vic McGee. Now, the other stories include King Vampire, Monster Raid, Spark of Life, and Count Aculard, which basically is a ripoff of Dracula. Now, in the later story, Jonathan Harker, one of the several roles played by Gentry, is revealed in a humorous twist to be a werewolf. Re-released in 1968 as the Bloodsuckers, it also was known as Return from the Past. Now, this film was only shot in five days. In a published interview, writer Rush Jones related that the director of photography, Austin McKinney, was struck on the head by a large piece of set lumber and knocked unconscious. Now, upon regaining consciousness, he continued working despite a bleeding head wound. Now, that is what you call determination. Coming in last is The Blood of Dracula's Castle. This was another cult B movie in which a couple of and a murderous werewolf show up at Dracula's castle. At this point, werewolves and vampires seem to be the standard monstrous two-for-one in cinema, and apparently audiences couldn't get enough of either. A 1967 theatrical version didn't include the werewolf scenes, and the serial killer character, Johnny, didn't transform but was motivated to kill during the full moon. In 1969 late-night TV version, the werewolf element was added for obvious reasons of improvement. Now, despite the 1969 copyright date on the title card, according to the date printed on the telegram shown in the scene immediately after the credits, the film was shot in August of 1966. The introductory sequence was shot at Marineland in Los Angeles County. Now, it remained open from 1954 to 87 when all the animals were moved to SeaWorld in San Diego, California. The Desert Castle exteriors were shot in Lancaster, California at the actual Shays Castle, also called Sky Castle or Castle Ranch. Now, it was built back in 1924 and is now a private residence. This location is located 70 miles north of downtown Los Angeles, which, by the way, just happens to be for sale if you're interested, and that's five million bucks. All right, there you go. There's our top five. So, uh, Maurice, what'd you think? You gotta be kidding me. Well, you know, like I said, you have to have the right, you have to like the old films. If you're looking at it from a modern horror fan perspective, they're going to all suck. Curse of the Werewolf, probably the one to watch. I think it was the best one of the, all of them. Although, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory was kind of interesting. Although the werewolf was kind of, you know, cheesy looking. But, okay, we'll give them effects of the 60s, of course. It's not going to be great. At least there were girls in the dormitory. But they weren't naked. That was disappointing. Anyway. So that's going to do it for this video. So you guys, uh, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and like it if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to be notified when we post further videos, which is every Saturday at noon Mountain Time. Till then, later, clear.